Friends, thanks for listening to Season 1 of Victory Groove. It has been a blessing to share with you stories of unsung heroes who have looked squarely at giants of all kinds and conquered them using their faith in God, as David did in the Bible when he ran toward the battlefield to take on Goliath. In this last episode of Season 1, broadcaster Chelsea Reber and I recap the journey and preview next season. Until next time, remember as believers, we already have the victory. We just need to get our groove back. I'm Chelsea Reber with Dr. Eli Jones, and we are wrapping up season one of Victory Groove. Now, Eli, uh, for people who may just be joining the podcast or just kind of want a little bit of a recap, what was the purpose behind starting Victory Groove? Yeah, thank you. Thank you for asking that. You know, God put in my heart to really share testimonies of people who have overcome major challenges, and particularly at this time. So when you think about, you know, post-COVID things that are going on, anxiety is one of the major mental health issues right now. That's the fear of the unknown. And when you think about it, at this moment, there's so much anxiety that has taken place. You know, even on campuses such as Texas A&M, we're having to hire additional resources to help students overcome anxiety. You know, this is a moment when believers are to step up and be the light, right? And so while I was writing my book, Run Toward Your Goliaths, it occurred to me that I wanted to share testimonies of others, not just my testimonies, but others who have overcome major challenges. Mm -hmm. And so that was the purpose of Victory Groove. And it was interesting, Chelsea, I got the idea, I was praying about it, and I got the idea just thinking about David and Goliath. So I started out with this run toward your Goliaths, and that is run toward those challenges mm -hmm. with confidence, with faith, as David ran toward Goliath. But also, when you think about it, King David, remember, he was a teenager when he took on Goliath, and he became a king. King David, do you remember what King David did when he saw the Ark of God? You're testing me on my, uh, on my knowledge, it, and I, I don't, so you'll have he, to inform me. He danced. He danced. Mm-hmm. So I'm also a musician, and okay. my wife is a singer, and so I love playing music. And so I, I was drawn to that story of King David. When he first saw the Ark of God, he just started dancing, right? Yeah. And he had the musicians playing. And I started thinking about that groove, right, as a musician, that groove, David dancing. And so Victory Groove came out of really thinking about that, King David. And I always say that, you know, we already have the victory as believers. Mm -hmm. We just have to get our groove back. I love that. How has your faith grown after hearing so many wonderful testimonies oh, in this first season? Yeah, yeah. You know, I started out with a strong faith to want to share with others. But along the way, when I think about the nine guests in season one, because I had uh, one guest who came on twice, and we'll talk about her. But when I think about the many challenges that others have faced, divorce, overcoming the fear of cancer, right? Uh, I think about servant leadership. I think about uh, how God can really show up in the midst of a crisis, right? And I think about all of the other challenges that we have actually broadcast out there in terms of the guests that we've had. All it's done is it's strengthened my faith. You know, I'm not the only one. There are others out there who have faced significant challenges, and they've been able to tell about those challenges and to encourage others. So this is meant to inspire. That's it. Now that you've gotten through this first season, I'm sure you had kind of an idea of what this would be like. Yeah. Did that change at all by the time you got to the end of the season? Was there anything that surprised you about the process or your feelings about the season? Yeah, that no, was a great question, too. You know, So I had a pretty good idea of what we wanted to convey in these messages. But my faith strengthened because, you know, I think about, for example, one particular guest. Uh, he was diagnosed with pediatric cancer at two years old. Mm. And uh, as I was interviewing Henry Talamantes, we can talk about uh, him in particular, but as I was interviewing him, I'm th I was thinking, wow, if you were diagnosed with cancer at such an early age and, uh, and, and how you might process your 
abilities, your capabilities in doing that. I was actually encouraged more because I heard about his story and how they were able to, his story and others, how they were able to convert that energy that's produced whenever there's a major challenge and convert it into something that's very positive. And in Henry's case, it was to really focus on making every minute count All right. Time management became his deal. He didn't know how long he was going to be here. So he focused on what God gave him to do, which was to start businesses. So I wasn't necessarily surprised. I was just encouraged by how people were able to convert that energy. And that's really the heart of Victory Groove. You've mentioned a few of your guests, so I would love to kind of go through, and for our listeners, you can go to elijones.com. All of the information on the guests is there. Um, You mentioned TJ Robinson being the guest that came on twice. So what did you speak with her about? Yeah. So uh, TJ is very interesting. So she has a book out, From Pitiful to Powerful. And it drew me in as I started thinking about that particular testimony. And so when I had a chance to interview her the first time, we really focused on this idea of overcoming a divorce. In her case, she'd been married for many years, had four children, and uh, it just didn't work out. Okay, it doesn't work out sometimes, but she held on to her faith. In fact, it strengthened her face of faith, I should say. She had to really focus on how do I process rearing my children, right? Being out of the job market for 17 years, going back into the, the job market. She had to process a lot. And with hers, it was really overcoming divorce. But the second part, which drew me in, it was toward the tail end of the interview when she mentioned I am. She talked about the powerful uh, part of affirmations, Mm. right? So you think about it, people wake up and say, I am, I am confident, I am beautiful, I am. And, And so she focused on that, but what really got my attention was how she talked about how God said, I am who I am, I am. And so she associated with God's statement about I am with affirmations. And she talked about the power that's in the I am when you say that. But she also said she always talked to her her children about the words that they choose. You know, some people will say, well, I'm not good at that. That's still an I am, right? Right. I'm not good at Mm -hmm. that. I'm not really great. Those are all I am statements. You've got to be very, very cautious about the words that you choose to use because that's feeding your mind and it's feeding your spirit. Yeah, staying with the positive. The positive, not the negative. yeah. Uh, then you spoke with Henry Telemontes. You mentioned him yeah. just a few minutes ago. Overcoming cancer was yeah. what his episode was about. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. And that was the part about, look, you know, being diagnosed with cancer at such an early age, I really had to think about how I would leverage the time I have on earth. And not many people think about that, you know, but I thought it was very mature on his part to really take that particular stance in terms of I'm going to do some good things while I'm here because I don't know how long I'll be here. Right. And so he doesn't take time for granted. I thought that was a really good podcast. Then you got to visit with a relative of yeah. yours, Odin Clack. Yeah. Uh, how special was that, oh, have him that on was the show? Very, very, very special. Yeah. So I was there with Odin and his family. Uh, so Odin is my nephew. And uh, I'm married to uh, his mom's sister. Okay. And I was there when we you know, drove to Galveston. They live in Galveston, Texas. His mom does. And, uh, and we were there when we were trying to help her cope with the death of her husband. Mm-hmm. All right. And Odin, being her son, was there. And they brought the baby for us to meet. Mm-hmm. So it was almost as if they passed in time, right? Passed in going in and out of heaven, so to speak. Right. And so as Odin's son was being born, his dad was passing. And so Odin talks a lot about what that meant to him mm-hmm. and how he was able to leverage that energy that was produced. I mean, think about it, being happy and sad at the same time. Right. It's supposed think to be about, one of the best days of your life yeah. and also one of the worst. Yeah. And he had to mm. cope with that. Mm-hmm. And it was almost simultaneous because his his son was born on the same day, just hours apart. So they that's why I say they kind of passed in heaven mm-hmm. in a sense. And how Odin was able to really distract himself from thinking negative thoughts, 
right? Mm -hmm. And uh, and his and his story is really interesting. So he just happened to go into a store, and he went into a leather goods store, and he picked up really a hobby to kind of distract his mind. He didn't want to think those negative thoughts. And later on, his son was diagnosed with something very early on. So he had a lot of things to process. You think about what people do when they have all of those emotions at the same time. What he did was he just picked up this little hobby mm -hmm. and he focused on it and he challenged himself to get better at this brand new hobby. Well, it turned into a business. Yeah. Odin leather goods. And he's doing very, very well. Yeah. And he and his wife and his entire family, they're involved in the business. It's right? incredible. So it's a, yeah, it's a great story. Just a fantastic testimony of how do you leverage the energy that's produced in a crisis. Later in the season, you spoke with Chris Field about answering God's call to make an impact globally. Uh, tell us a little bit about that episode. Yeah. So with Chris, it's interesting because you know he's here in the U.S., and uh, he faced a challenge, and God led him to do something about, you know, when you go abroad and you have people who leverage children, right? Uh, and in this case, what he wanted to do was to go and help with this mission mm -hmm. that God gave him to do in Ghana. And so he did some positive things to rescue these children. And, you know, when I think about, you know, how, you know, you can give a person a fish and they eat for a day but you could teach them how to fish and they eat for a lifetime. It's one of those stories, how he was able to go there mm -hmm. and work with the people there in Ghana and teach them how to fish so that they could survive. Just a powerful testimony, overcoming another challenge that he had. Something that I think a lot of people are experiencing um, these days and people are becoming more open about talking about it is overcoming depression. Yeah. And that's what you spoke to Victoria Walker about. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. She's fascinating. She has her own podcast to choose to think. And, uh, and I met her and it was really powerful because, you know, when she was going, she went through a divorce too, by the way, which triggered depression. And her story is really, hey, look, I've been a believer for many years, and I thought I was doing God's work, and all of a sudden I had this major disappointment, which triggered depression. But what I loved about talking to her is how you have to, she talks about kind of capturing those negative thoughts, you know, t really focused on grabbing those negative thoughts and taking them captive Mm -hmm. Right. And how do you take those negative thoughts and produce things that are positive? So all of this is about conversion. Sure. Uh, Victory Groove is about how things can convert and turn into something positive, mm -hmm. something negative, turning to something positive. And it's very inspiring. You also spoke with uh, Chuck Condorla, Trusting yeah. in God's Will to Find Peace was yeah. the name of that episode. What was that about? Yeah. So Chuck had uh, several <laughs> testimonies in the 30 minutes of mm -hmm. the podcast that he shared with us. One, he talked about losing his mom, mm. all right, and uh, and how his mom, as she was going on to heaven, how she talked a little bit about peace and God's will. And I think about how often we talk about God's will, even if it's something that we don't agree with, but it's still God's will. That particular podcast is about that. It's really understanding what God's will is all about and accepting God's will. And he went on to talk about his daughter overcoming a health challenge, and even he overcame a health challenge. And it was all about God's will and peace. And if there's, a, if there's something that this world needs right now, it's peace. Yeah. People really need to have peace of mind. And that's, I thought, was a very, very powerful podcast. You spoke with David Deary about leadership yeah. in faith. How can servant leadership change someone's faith journey? Yeah. So, you know, first of all, when I think about servant leadership, and I've been a student of leadership for many, many years, you know, I've looked, you know, I've read John Maxwell's leadership book and Warren Bennis's leadership book. Uh, I've read a lot about leadership and I've been a leader. I've been a leader in business and in academia. And this idea of servant leadership is a very important concept where you put others before yourself and how you look at an organization when you're asked to lead it, and how you enable people to do their jobs, right? It's all about others, not about yourself, which is, again, part of Victory Groove, right? And with David Deary, I met him through our entrepreneurship boot camp for veterans. So he's a veteran. Okay. And he was led to start this organization to work with veterans to become leaders, 
right? And uh, and I thought that podcast was very good because he clarified this idea of servant leadership, and he talks about how you can leverage your faith as a servant leader. So that's that's a really good one too. And then finally, you wrapped up with R.C. Slocum, oh, yeah. a name that many yeah. people, or at least around the Texas A&M sure. family, will recognize. Um, yeah. Taking the high road with yeah. faith. Yeah. What was that conversation like? Yeah. So, you know, in the course of, call it 30 minutes, a little more than 30 minutes, uh, R.C., who's very, very special to many of us, as you know, yeah. he's an award-winning coach for many years, uh, had such a winning record. Uh, he faced a major disappointment. And how many of us have disappointments that we face? You might be doing something very, very well, and all of a sudden you're asked to resign or something along that line. So in the course of 30 plus minutes, he talked about three major challenges, one being a first gen. I'm a first gen college graduate too. And I can really relate to this idea of being a first generation college grad and really you know, having family, loving family, who can't really help you, you know, because right. they haven't had the same experience. So we talked about that. And then we talked about his coaching career and uh, and what happened to him, which we all know what happened to him. You know, he, but he he and his family handled it so gracefully. Right. And they're still in our community. They're still here. And yeah. they're still contributing to yeah. the university. Yeah. And then, you know, finally, we talked about his bout with cancer. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's kind of very a, recent, very, very recent. recent. Yeah, it was last so. summer, mm -hmm. as it turns out. Mm -hmm. And so and, and how he had to leverage his faith in that situation in particular. And so, you know, we had really great. So 10 episodes. Uh, the first, very first one was my explaining the okay. purpose of Victor mm -hmm. Group, but then we had the, the guests that came in. And I'll tell you what, I'm, I'm excited about next season. I, we're already starting to line up some other folks who will be a with this next season. We're going to talk about that in just a little bit. Um, this season, I do want to, I do want to touch on this before we move on. It really focused on leaning on God and finding your rhythm. You mm -hmm. talked about rhythm and right. with the word groove, um, especially in times of trauma yeah. and hardships, what advice would you give a viewer in the midst of some overwhelming adversities? Yeah. So I, you know, I shared my testimony. I, you know, I lost my oldest daughter, and uh, and, and when I use find your rhythm, let me just share a little bit more about that. And it's kind of coming from the musician side of me, right? So my wife and I have had several ministries over time, and uh, we love playing music. And I, in particular, I love starting new bands because you know, think about a new band coming together and the musicians coming together. Mm -hmm. And of course, you know, one could read music, but we always say, no, let's play by ear. It's more fun that way, right? And so when you're trying to put a group of people together, uh, in, in this case, in, instruments are being played, the musicians are playing different instruments. And when you first get going, you know, you're kind of trying to find that rhythm, yeah. right? Uh, everybody's playing a different instrument and you're trying to get on the same page, so to speak. But it's always cool to watch. If you ever watch a live band play, you know, and you start really focusing on how they come together and they create that chemistry, all right, and they come together to create beautiful music. So maybe starting out the very first time, it's a little awkward. You're trying to, you know, read each other mm -hmm. and what's being done, but eventually you kind of find your rhythm. So if you look at it that way, I've got in the book, uh, "Run Toward Your Goliaths." You know, the first section of the book is build on your foundation. The second section is find your rhythm. Mm -hmm. And I dig into that finding your rhythm. And so this season also was a way to demonstrate how people who may have lost the rhythm because of a tragedy and how they had to regain that rhythm. They had to find their groove, right? And so it certainly happened with my family. So as, as soon as we had this disruption in our family, we kind of lost our rhythm. You know, we were kind of out of tune. We were off beat a little bit because this was a surprise to everyone. And so we had to kind of come back together again and find our rhythm. And I use that in a lot of different cases. When you think about, for example, people who are starting out their careers, right? So they're, you know, we are in the environment, university environment. So I'm around a lot of folks who are thinking about their careers and where, God, where I'm going to go and, you know, where is God going to take me and how do I leverage my strengths and my passion and that. In a sense, these, you know, folks are youngsters. They're kind of learning their rhythm. They're kind of figuring out, well, here's my calling. Here's, you know, I'm pretty passionate about this. It's sort of like the band example that I gave. You're kind of finding your rhythm. What am I 
good at it? What can I do? And what's my calling? What am I passionate about? What's going to motivate me? And it's it's a bit about, you know, crawling, walking, and then running toward your Goliaths. But you have to crawl first. And I certainly, in my career, since I'm in my third <laughs> career, but, uh, you know, I certainly had to find my rhythm. And I had to do it with a family at a very, very early age. And so I'm passing that along to others, that it happens and it could be a good thing. And yeah, and I think a lot of younger people, they think they have to have a career picked yeah, out at yeah. 18 years old sometimes, yeah. and that's not true. And right. we all know that. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, okay, you've alluded to your book a couple of times, sure. and I, for one, read it, and it was phenomenal. Okay. Loved the read. Okay. Um, but for those of us who are, for those of our viewers or listeners who haven't heard about it, um, tell us a little bit more about it. And then can you tell me what has made you the most proud throughout the process of writing that book. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, I started out by writing to my family after the tragedy that happened to us. Uh, you know, my daughter left behind three beautiful children. So we it was not only coping with the death of my eldest daughter, but it was also working with our grandchildren. And, uh, and we're still working with our grandchildren, of course. And so when I think about it, when I started the project, it was really, hey, I'm going to write to my family. I'm the leader of my family. I need to write to my family and be strong for them and encourage them. And as I was writing, I was sharing draft chapters with different people. And I heard often, well, maybe you ought to publish this. So in a sense, when people pick up the book, know that I intended to write to my family strictly. But as I was encouraged to publish it, I, what's been really encouraging is to get the feedback. Mm -hmm. So I really did. I prayed over the book and I asked for a special revelation for each reader. And, you know, I'm only hearing from maybe 1% of the people who may be reading the book, but that 1% is just amazing, the stories that I've heard. Uh, I'll give you one. I uh, just shared it with the group uh, here on campus a couple of days ago. So, you know, it, when I got into my third career, which is academia, I became a professor. My first job was at the University of Houston, and I taught a lot of students during that time. But there was this one particular student that caught my attention, um, and I hadn't heard from her in many, many years. Well, she not only bought the book, but she also listened to the podcast. Mm -hmm. Now, we've been disconnected for 22 years, and she wrote me through LinkedIn. She said, it was so good to run across your podcast and to listen to you after all those years had passed. And she talked about it, and this is not about me, it's about God, but it does say uh, to me, how encouraging it is to really work toward inspiring others. And sometimes you reconnect with people. She went on to say, I've got two kids, a daughter and a son. And I've told them about what I learned from you back in 1999. Mm -hmm. And when I heard your podcast and I heard your voice, she said, all of that came back to me. And she, she said, my children know about you and your teachings. But this is the one that got me the most. She said, how much grace can one have to be taught by a soul like yours over a long period of time? Oh, man, I had to, I had to wipe my eyes on that one. That it's was a pretty a, powerful statement. That was state. a powerful statement. Yeah. And I think yeah. about, you know, while we're here, you know, we are souls and we are to inspire others. It's not necessarily about us. You know, sometimes God will bless us so that we can bless others, right? Mm -hmm. And when I think about, you know, kind of the, the different ways we're disseminating, you know, his messages, we're doing it through the podcast, through the book, through social media. It's all about really meeting people at their need right now, which is, again, fear, anxiety. And it's up to us to say there's good news here, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. God is real, right? He's still on the throne and he can help you, right? That's what this is all about. Well, here we are wrapping up season one. So let's give our listeners and viewers a little sneak peek of season two. What are some topics that you plan on covering in season two of Victory Groove? Yeah. You know, I think when I 
look at what I'd say God has done it because I'm being led to do this. But when I think about season one, we kind of found our rhythm Mm -hmm. (laughs) back to the point, kind of found our rhythm there. You know, we were led to talk to a couple of people and it just unfolded. And what's beautiful about it is it actually tells a story. When you listen to all of the episodes, uh, you you can hear the story unfold. Well, building off of that, you know, I'm still praying about what season two can be about, but already... I'm starting to get some general ideas. Think about when you bless others, God blesses you. You know, you kind of give out of your need. And that's a concept that really is strong in our faith is you give out of your need and you get blessed. But think about the multiple ways that you can be blessed, right? There's healing power. There's one, you know, there's an emotional strength. You know, it's, it's an amazing feeling to be operating in this calling and knowing that you were born to do what you're doing. All right. Mm-hmm. Think about that. You were born to do this. And that whole finding your calling part, which is also in the book, you know, it really is a part about, you know, go explore, go do some things. And along the way, you're going to find that rhythm. In season two, I'm going to share with you some people who have clearly found their rhythm and they've been blessed in multiple ways. And some have been blessed immensely financially, right? It's not all about the finances, Mm -hmm. but I want to point to a couple of people who went from pitiful to very powerful. And I can't wait to share those guests with you. Are you willing to give up any names right now? Oh, I want to. <laughs> I really <laughs> right want on the tip to. of your tongue, I can tell. <laughs> That's right. Oh, it's going to be great. Definitely something to look great. forward to in season two. Yeah. Well, as we wrap up, if you, it's kind of tough to to pick one thing that you want people to really take away from season one. But if there's one lesson that you really want people to remember after season one of Victory Groove, uh, what would that be? It's clear to me that. Uh, God is still on the throne. He's still on the throne. He's still in control. You know, going through COVID, I can tell you being hunkered down and sheltering in place and being away from our families and being away from others. You know, sometimes people may have questioned, is God still there? Is he still real? Is he still in control? And it's become crystal clear to me that he is. He is. He is the great I am. Well, that is a wrap on season one. If people want to find out more about the podcast or the book, Running Towards Your Goliath, you can go to elijones.com. And uh, we hope you stay tuned for season two. We hope you come back. Yes, yes, yes. And send me comments. You can find me on LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. Uh, please send those comments. Yeah, you mentioned know. wanting the feedback yes. if people are yeah, willing absolutely. to give it. So yeah. for Dr. Eli Jones, I'm Chelsea Reber, and we hope you come back for season two of Victory Groove. Thanks for listening. Be sure to join Dr. Jones next season on Victory Groove.